Hi guys, in this tutorial I will show you the basics of how to uh, edit your photos and show you how to do things like how to paint over your photos, how to remove things like pimples and things like that. If you want to know how to do basic photo editing like changing the colors, doing uh, image overlays and things like that, I recommend you check out part one of this tutorial that you can find over here. Uh, but this tutorial will sort of cover how to change uh, the actual image itself. So we won't be using nodes in this tutorial. We'll be modifying the image directly. Okay, so we will use the same picture of the old man that I uh, used in the previous tutorial purely because I find this image to be quite striking. Let's start a brand new Blender file. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the cube and delete it by hitting X delete. So to select the cube, just click it and hit X delete. Then for this one, I'm going to position the camera to be on the front. So to move the camera right in front, go ahead and select your camera. Hit 1 on your numpad to go into front view. So it should show front orthographic. Then Control alt numpad 0 to put the camera directly in front. Next up, we want to add an image that will face the camera directly. So in order to add the image, I'm just going to do a shortcut. I'm going to go to Edit Preferences and then search for Images as Planes. And go ahead and tick this one. You only need to do this once, so if you're going to work on multiple image projects, you don't have to keep coming here and taking this one. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, what you want to do now is you want to go to Shift A to add a new image, and you're just going to go Images as Planes. And the image that we'll be picking is the one from the photos of the old man. So now we're working in the 3D viewport, whereas before we used the node editor. So if I hit 0 on my numpad, I can see what the image looks like in um, the 3D view. But we can't see our image, so we need to change over to this view over here. So from solid from solid mode to the material preview mode. And we want our image to be bigger. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit S to scale, or you can use this, uh, this widget over here. Click that one and then click and drag this white circle over here. So now you will have to manually tweak uh, the, um, where the image will uh, appear in your render. So once you have something that looks like that, and then hit F12 or render, render image, you see something that looks like that. Now it doesn't look very good. It looks quite darker than the original. That's because in the 3D viewport, uh, it makes use of lighting. You can, now if you, go, you can go to render image or you can alternatively go to this one here as well, which will be the same thing as rendering. Okay, right now it looks a little bit washed out over here. So again, we need to do one more thing in the shading workspace over here. We need to change this one from a principal BSDF to a shader emission BSDF. So connect the color to the color and this emission to the surface, like so. Then we can just select this principal BSDF and remove it. And that's it. that's it so if you uh, click and drag the strength it makes the image look more brighter so you don't need to worry about that compositing so on, on top of this compositing effects using nodes you can also play around with the material nodes so these nodes here are purely for the material so if you have 3d objects you have all these nodes like uh, whether you want it to be whether you want it to be a light kind of object whether you want it to be a glass object a glossy object a volume object like if you have like clouds and things like that so it determines the type of material of your 3d object so in this case i'm saying that this photo will just be a light a light source so if i go to the rendered mode and then change this one to be value of one we have something that looks like that which is good okay so the setup for this type of image is now done Next thing we want to do is we want to uh, start to play around with the actual photo. So maybe I can start to remove some wrinkles over here uh, and maybe, you know, play around with uh, adding some painting effects and things like that. So if I go ahead, well, let's quickly go ahead and hit render image. That looks correct now. So let's go ahead now and start to actually edit our photos and start painting in stuff. In particular, let's go ahead and start try to remove some of these wrinkles as well. So in order to do that, we need to go to the Texture Paint workspace, like so. So here is where we can start to do some pretty cool stuff. 
for this one I'll go ahead and change either to the uh, the material preview mode or the rendered mode both should look pretty much the same okay I'll go ahead and use material preview mode simply because it's a little like a tad bit faster than using the rendered mode rendered mode is just a little bit slow for me okay so over here you have these th uh, what is it? you have these six brushes uh, in future versions of blender you may have more but at this point in time we have six brushes so the settings for these brushes can be found over here so let's start off with this first brush the draw brush I can start to draw whatever I like over here and it also reflects in our render as well so control Z to undo I can draw over here as well I can draw the eyes so if you want the brush to be bigger just turn up the radius so if I make the radius really big you can see how big it can go um, the strength that determines how strong your brush is so if I make it really really small the brush's effect is very very minuscule I mean it's there so if I go ahead and make the radius smaller a shortcut to change the radius is using F by the way so hit F on your keyboard and let's move the radius to be smaller to about 91 pixels if I draw in you can see that it's quite subtle so you can add in really really light effects like makeup and things like that to the shortcut for the strength is shift F so if I make this one a little bigger then the strength is a little bit higher okay so F and shift F are your best friends when it comes to texture painting these little bridges here uh, is to do with strength pressure so if you are using a digital drawing tablet and a pen for this one digital drawing tablets have pressure sensitivity so if you draw on your tablet hard then this will effect will automatically be stronger like this but if you draw very very lightly then it will be quite subtle so it's very very good for an artist these aren't the only two settings like over here you can change the color of course so you have different colors that you can put for your um, image but you also have all these settings as well so any brush over here has different settings accordingly so for this draw brush you can do all these other things like for the fall off you can control how sharp or how uh, like like for example let me just go over the strength over here if I draw like this you can see how soft the edges look but if I change the fall off to something like like that it looks quite harsh so again these are like for this will be useful for artists and if you don't like any of these you can obviously tweak the settings create very very cool kind of effects like if I go something like that you can create like little, little circle patches the stroke and all this stuff these are advanced effects but I'm not going to really spend too much time the stroke will determine how your strokes will look when you paint like space will just draw like lines like that but if you use something like anchored you, you can control very very fine grained uh, how the, the colors will look line will allow you to just draw like a little line like that like that and so on so you can play around with these different kind of effects I generally tend to keep the default uh, space and I do use anchored sometime if I want to draw in pimples and stuff like that but uh, for the most part that's fine by the way if you tick this stabilize stroke it'll allow you to draw fine grained lines like there's a little bit of a delay in that sometimes that delay is done on purpose so you draw like very very well controlled lines that don't look very how do I say jittery finally another thing we can do in terms of painting uh, stuff is you can paint in textures like for example if I use a texture over here and hit new texture uh, let's call it one my texture you can go to the texture tab over here with my texture you can load in your own image texture or you can load in like I don't know these other kind of ones like for example if I use a marble texture and I draw that you can draw in these weird and wacky kind of textures but yeah for the most part this has its uses in uh, image or movie so if you can load in a texture like a seamless texture of say pimples or pores or something like that that this will be quite useful to pretty much draw in pimples and pores or if you, if you want to draw scars on your character then this is this is the place to do it I might show tutorials on how to do that later on I'm gonna go back to this active tool tab right at the top and we don't, we don't want any texture we'll just go back to the way it was before and that's pretty much the gist of the the draw brush uh, next is a soften brush um, 
you can you have similar settings over here but again you can just the soften brush simply will just soften your image so it's a little laggy but as you can see it makes the image look a little soft so if you want to this is great if you want to add things like depth of field you know if you want to enhance this depth of field but it is a little laggy because of the resolution of this image uh, the smear brush also similar like you can smear parts of this image that doesn't look right I use spacing of 1% and then move it like that then we can see that we can start to see the effect of the smear even better so this controls the quality of the smear 10% um, will obviously look a little less accurate but a little bit faster the clone brush is quite useful in removing these pores and wrinkles and stuff like that. In order to use the this clone brush, you can't do it in here. Like you can't draw on the image and then draw another part. You have to do it in this viewer here, the, the 3D viewport. So the way to do it is going by going Control Left Click. So make sure that 3D cursor is there, and then I might make it smaller, and then just draw where you want to draw, or, or like where you want to clone out the image. So in this case, I might control left click over here and then just use it pretty much to soften out and remove all these little wrinkles. Help him make, help make him look a little bit younger. Okay, so as long as you get the idea. The mask tool, I don't, I don't tend to use that one much as well. For the draw brush, uh, we can also do the similar kind of thing like we did originally. Uh, like for changing the eye color, make the strength a lot more subtle. And that this is just a much more quicker way of changing the eye color than using the nodes. Perhaps we can make the eyes stand out a little bit more by adding a bit of uh, that white, and maybe increasing the strength and drawing in a bit more strength. And drawing in this little shape over here. And then maybe it's a little square over here. And we can get a little bit more of a stylized effect. Make it really, really subtle. And there you go. So as you can see, we can do some painting and modify this original photo as is. And even on top of that, you can go ahead and add in more compositing effects. Like if I go to compositing over here and go use nodes. Uh, and then I can use that original render layers now. We don't need to touch anything else. And we can do some more kind of effects to it. Like for example, in this case, maybe I want to go to uh, color balance and uh, I also want to see a view, so output viewer. Let's go and have a look at this one. Maybe I can give this one a, a little bit more of a mood. So I can control this one. So maybe I can make it look a little bit more, more like that. This one can go on the opposite side and have a little bit more blue to make it look cooler. And maybe a little bit on the red to make it look, actually, uh, on the orange to make it look a bit more warmer. Something like that, I think will look good. I think I completely stuffed up this image in this area over here. 
completely ruined it. Anyways, nevertheless, what I might also do is I might go ahead and add in a vignette. Go to Shift A, uh, filter blur, and then also a distort lens distortion. Let's go ahead and change this distort to one. And connect this to this image, change this to fast Gaussian, um, and change this one to 250 by 250. Let's connect this blur right into this image part over here. So now we can still see this sort of uh, black and white. 300 by 300 would be good enough. And we go ahead and change this from mix to multiply. And we have a, a vignette. You can, you can control the strength of that vignette by using uh, this factor slider over here. So in this case, I wanted to, I want to have a lot more vignettes so that we can focus on this character's eyes a little bit, bit more. Sorry, go a color color correction maybe. No, not that one. Yeah, something like that. Oh, hue saturation value. I might uh, increase the saturation to maybe 1.2 and the value to 1.1. And yeah, I think I might pretty much call that one done. As you can see, that's another way of editing photos in Blender using paint brushes and cloning tools and smear brushes and things like that in order to create. Um, uh, cool looking photos and finally using the node system the node editor from the compositor to add in things like vignettes So that's it. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you And if you found it useful, please go ahead and like share and subscribe if you have any questions Please feel free to drop it in the comments below and also if you missed out the first part of this video Go ahead and check out the link over here. Cool. Thanks for watching